Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It is May the 8th, 2024. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Jamal Charlo. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now this morning, and it is May the 8th, 2024, if you go to BoxRack.com, and if you look up one of boxing's most historical divisions, the middleweight division, right? Think Carlos Monzon. Think Hopkins. Think Stanley Ketchell, right? That website wants all of us to believe that the top middleweight on the planet is Jamal Charlo. Now, you may have heard that Jamal Charlo was in his Lamborghini. He had a blood alcohol level almost twice the legal limit. He right now uh, is under suspicion of a DWI. He's been stripped of his title, throwing the door wide open in the division. Now let me make a few points here. The first point is that the experts aren't the experts. Right? You need to think for yourself when you're judging fighters. The idea that after his level of inactivity, after his level of opposition, recent opposition, that Jamal Charlo belonged at the top of the middleweight division, to me is downright ridiculous. I love Box Rack. I go to that site often, including this morning. Right? But you need to look at their rankings and you need to think about your own. Right? They're just a data set. You need to have other data sets. Right? You have fighters like Carlos Adamas who is replacing Charlo as champion. Erislandi Lara, who quite frankly is a future Hall of Famer. Janabek, who in my opinion is the best in the division. Right, I'm not relying on some website. I'm not relying on some pundit online. Right, you need to figure out the players. I'd take Hamza Shiraz in a second over Jamal Charlo, right, in a second, right, I take Chris Eubank over Jamal Charlo, let's be clear here, but the real goal of this video isn't to diss, excuse me, Jamal Charlo, right, it's not to diss him, he's a guy with dreams like all of us, right, he's still an unbeaten fighter as I make this video. But what I want to encourage boxing to do, what I want to encourage boxing fans to consider is the increased use of the champion in recess designation, right? Because we've had events, COVID, for example, where a lot of fighters said, hey, I'm not going to fight. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. But we can't create a traffic jam in these divisions that prevents other fighters from fighting for the title. Right? Now, as I like to say, life is unfair. Boxing is a battlefield. You have some great soldiers who have been hit and who are down on the battlefield. Right? They can't continue because they've been injured. The injuries could be physical. The injuries could be mental. Right? The mental injuries, in fact, may have been caused by the physical beatings. 
you follow this sport, and it's a young man's sport, long enough, and you're going to see some of your heroes with slurred speech. You're going to see some great fighters who won big fights, who you always thought, this guy's well-spoken, he clearly is going to be a boxing analyst if he wants to be, he's going to be involved in the sport as a manager or as a promoter. At a minimum, he's going to be a ambassador for the sport with fans. And then, of course, you realize that the guy uh, is having mental health problems. That the guy, after a great career, might not even be able to financially support himself or his family. Right? Think Wilfred Benitez. Great fighter. Great fighter. But, of course, this sport can take its toll. You're going to have great soldiers hit on the battlefield, unable to live life the way they have in the past, no matter how great a soldier they were. Right? So, in that world, let me just say, you really need to view boxing as the survival of the fittest. Maybe there are some people watching this video who feel that the hitman, right, um, Jamal Charlo, should get further opportunities to defend his title. I want boxing to go the other way. I want boxing to say, hey, you're a champ. You have a responsibility to the public if you can't defend your title on a somewhat regular basis for whatever reason before world-class competition right then we're gonna give you a champion in recess designation when you get healthy you can then come back and be near the front of the line for future title fights but we're going to give these other guys an opportunity to fight for the designation of champion. Understand, the sport can't wait for any champion. Understand, the title, in my opinion at least, is more than an ad campaign and a cute nickname. You have some great champions out there. I don't even have to name the guy. You know who I'm talking about. The type of man who will cross an ocean, who will cross the Atlantic and go to Wembley to fight an Anthony Yard. Right? You have guys who take the belt that seriously. Right? You look at some of these champions. They'll have fights against a Canelo. They'll have a fight against a Joe Smith. They'll have a fight against a Gilberto Ramirez. And that's in the normal course, because for fighters like this, they understand they have an obligation to fight the best. If the public says these guys are the best contenders, these fighters will go find them and fight them. Years ago, I was struck. You had a fight, Robert Hellenius, against Derek Chisora. I thought Chisora beat him. Apparently, I wasn't alone. A lot of people thought Chisora was robbed in that fight. Believe it or not, the heavyweight champ at the time, Vitaly Klitschko, rather than fight Hellenius, who was declared the winner, instead announced he was going to fight Derek Chisora, the guy who many of us thought actually won the fight. Right? Vitaly Klitschko's idea of being champion had him fighting guys who he thought actually won the fight. Right? That's the spirit in boxing that we want to back. So let me just say, you have champs who have problems. Right? Mental health concerns. And I'm someone who believes that you can have mental health problems and should still be allowed to fight championship fights, right? 
because I think we're kidding ourselves. I think boxing is littered with some great champions who had mental health problems. I'm not here to out anyone, but there's a famous fighter who talks about how on his way into the ring, he knew whether or not he would be able to win the fight. This guy's one of the all-time greats in the sport. Right, so people can discuss their own health conditions. We'll give people privacy. But I do believe that if you're a champion and you're dealing with personal problems, right, failed relationships, uh, I'm divorced myself, right? I know how they can throw you off your game, right? Failed relationships, financial problems. You've had some great fighters in history, among them Joe Lewis, who owed the IRS a lot of money. This is why he was fighting, right? You'd be surprised at the high caliber of some of the fighters who've had financial problems, right? We understand you can have mental health problems. We understand you can have physical problems. Let's face it, Charlo's not the first guy to have problems with a sports car. In those situations, we need to have a mechanism by which the rest of the division gets to continue to compete. So, let me just say, we have to be able to move on from troubled champions. Right? We have to be able to tell them, player, we're taking the belt back while you deal with this adversity. If you can't fight the best, we need to take the belt back from you. We can call you a champion in recess. We need to allow guys who are willing to fight against the best to compete. So, Jamal Charlo, unbeaten fighter, number one on box rack this morning, has had his title taken away. Right? It should have happened sooner. I believe his last fight was against David Benavides' brother. Right? You cannot have a champion in a loaded division who's not going to fight the best in that loaded division. Right? You just simply can't. I don't care if you're an unbeaten fighter. This sport has fighters willing to cross oceans to take on worthy challengers. Right? We cannot have a situation where a fighter's problems out of the ring somehow justify his inability to fight the best in the ring, right? If a champion is so troubled that he's unavailable for big fights, then you need to have a situation like what has happened to Jamal Charlo, where his title is taken from him. And now Carlos Adamas, an active fighter, will now have the opportunity to wear that belt while he fights. The Eubankses, the Shirazes, the Ammo Williamses, the, the Nusultanoffs, the guys who should get shots at the title. Let me point out too, boxing is a young man's game. You're only in your prime for so long. Many of the guys I've named, Janabek, he's in his 30s. Eubank, he's in his 30s. Lara, might be older than that. Right? Understand, you cannot tell a generation of fighters in their 30s that they can't fight for the title. Because... 
a Jamal Charlo is afraid of COVID, a Jamal Charlo is having marital problems, isn't getting along with his brother, might be having mental health problems, and that everyone should be patient. This is an impatient sport, right? Let's use the champion in recess designation more often. Let's develop ways to tell champs, look, player, the world keeps rotating. We're going to have to have you step aside so that others can fight for titles. The folks who you haven't been fighting can actually fight for titles. We need for you to defend your belt at least once a year. We can't have all the explanations and excuses for the hiatuses you've been taking from the sport. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Hitman is a highly skilled fighter. As I said in this video, he's unbeaten. Right? He won his belt. Good for him. As champion, he's been MIA for too much. Now to hear about a DWI. I think it's time that the sports step in. It has. I'm grateful. Those are my views. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.